Hi, it's Mike Ferry. Welcome to Mike Ferry TV, the week of February 11th. One of the good parts of doing these programs with you each week is we get a lot of questions sent in, and I thought today, because there were two particular questions that were sent several times over the last several weeks, I thought I would address them with you this morning. First question is, Mike, what are your predictions for the real estate market for 2013? And of course, the good news is I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, it's impossible to tell. A thousand things could change. And obviously, based on what we've seen in the last few years, it couldn't get much worse than we've seen in the past. But I think that everybody in real estate today, based on 2012, is very optimistic. Now, there's a lot of reasons for that. One, of course, we're optimistic because you know, we had a five to five and a half year recession, in some cases, depression in real estate. And, you know, those things have to end because those are always cyclical. They can't go on forever. So we saw a natural ending to that. And of course, that ending took place primarily because the banks, the mortgage firms stopped the REO um, fast track number being put on the market so quickly. And with that stopped, that, of course, shrunk the inventory. When that inventory shrinks, demand is created. Demand is created, which it did in 2012, and we're enjoying the benefit of that today. But the other reason why I don't think the market's going to take a turn for the worse is, you know, there's probably a good solid three to five year pent up desire for people to buy real estate. You know, buying real estate is a natural part of our economy. People buy and sell all the time. It's been going on forever. And over the last five years, the number of sales dropped 20, 30, 40 percent, depending on the marketplace. As a result of that, we obviously now have this big pent up group of people that would like to invest, like to buy, like to move up, like to move down, etc. And they've just been waiting for the economy to get better. Now, there's no question today the economy is better than it was, say, three years ago. There's no question about that. But at the same time, remember, the majority of the world is still very nervous about the economy. I mean, and they have a right to be nervous about the economy with a lot of the budgetary problems going on, at least in the U.S. government, with some of the tax problems a lot of the states are having, it's, it's an obvious concern. So with all that being said, I think we're going to see a stronger 2013 than we saw in 2012. And 2012 was an incredibly great year compared to 07, 08, 09, and 10. So let's be optimistic. Now, the worst case scenario, and I, and I say this to our customers all the time, the worst case scenario <coughs> is what is the advantage of being a pessimist? What's the advantage of being negative about the market? What's the advantage of saying to yourself, my listings aren't going to sell, my buyers aren't going to buy? There's no advantage whatsoever. So let's remain as the eternal optimist, which we should be just in our normal personal life and very much so in our business life. The second question that has come up a lot, and I, I've had this discussion with a lot of our different mastermind groups, with my Think Big groups, uh, with my Mondays, with Mike Group, with a lot of the individual coaches who are working with some of you and hopefully more of you all the time. <clears throat> and that is the question is, how do I raise my average sales price on a listing? The obvious reason for this question, of course, is the fact that we had a big depression in prices, a lowering of prices, a drop in prices, a fall in prices, and sometimes we had prices just fall through the floor with the last five or six years. And those prices now eventually will come back because remember, whenever you have a low, you always have an equivalent high. Whenever you have a high, you have an equivalent low. So we're seeing an upsurge today, as I just mentioned, but that upsurge will last two, three, four years, then we'll see a natural decline again. Well, the challenge we face today is that the prices, and the prices affect the sellers, they affect the brokers, they affect the managers, they affect the agents, you, the title insurance, the mortgage companies, all aspects of real estate were affected by prices because in our industry of real estate, people are generally paid a percentage of, a portion of what things sell for. And with prices dropping so dramatically, 20, 30, 40, 50%, depending on where you lived over the last five years, the average commission check that you're experiencing is down dramatically. We talk to agents every day that say in 06, we're getting $9,000 per commission check. And in 010, they were getting $3,500 per commission check, a reflection, of course, of the prices. So what do we do to raise our average commission check, or in essence, raise our average sales price? So here's what I tell our customers. First of all, you need to see what is the next market level that you're working in. 
if your average sales price for example is 175 what is the next defined market level is it the 250 to 275 as an example identify that next market level then second and most importantly really do some market statistics what is going on in that price range you know are there enough listings to keep a number of great salespeople in business are there enough listings sold enough buyer controlled sales because the activity is as important as anything it doesn't matter if you raise your average sales price if there's nothing going on in that marketplace then I say to them third okay start going out and previewing properties first before you do anything else preview properties you've got to get comfortable because most agents are not comfortable outside of their average sales price now I hope you're an exception but if you're used to selling quarter million dollar homes and you jump to 500,000 many agents get uncomfortable in price ranges the most common thing I see and I hear it all the time Mike my average sales price is 300 and I got a call to come out and list a million dollar house I didn't know what to say I didn't know what to do hey those people are exactly the same but you have to get comfortable with the fact those people are exactly the same so start previewing properties in the next price range and preview enough to get comfortable in the neighborhoods the types of homes etc then fourth I tell my clients take 25 percent of the prospecting time that you invest in each day and week and put it in that next price range and then fifth work real hard to get that first appointment work real hard to get that first experience because you'll discover that experience will be exactly like all the rest that you've had there's no difference yes this person in a seven hundred thousand dollar home may have a higher income than a person in a three hundred dollar home but they're human beings they have needs wants desires that you can take care of and solve for them so thanks for sending in those two questions now interestingly enough we've peaked out at a little over in the month of January 10,000 viewers per week which uh, we're excited about because see just a couple of years ago when we started we were struggling to have 1500 viewers per week so we're glad this is catching on tell your friends what the heck all right we left off on point 21 in our last episode I want you to listen carefully to point 22 on our way to 100 plus thoughts on listing property create a simple form that you can actually put in your pre-listing package that allows the seller to write out all the improvements they've made on the home and they hand that to you walk into the house see give the seller a chance to express themselves now in the pre-qualifying yes we're going to ask the question can you describe or would you describe your home for me in as much detail as possible well it's a four bedroom three and a half bath single story ranch two car attached garage great tell me more well that's about it well see that's not enough to help you do a proper evaluation so I'm going to suggest to you you just take a simple piece of paper and you put down seller improvements and list one through ten and put a note attached please fill in any improvements you've made to the house get it to me before I see you on Tuesday night or have it for me when I walk in the door and the purpose of that of course is to help you make sure you understand the value of that property and can price it and not create more objections that normally come up when they say our house is better and here's why you need to be aware of what those particular thoughts are the next five or six points in today's episode are going to be short scripts because I give a lot of scripts as you have probably noticed for people to use so here's point 23 script are you as convinced as I am that I should be the agent to sell your home isn't that a great little closing question to ask now think about it are you as convinced as I am that I should be the agent to sell your home now if they say yes sign the contract if they say no what's the problem what's the question what's going on that is keeping you at this point from engaging me in getting your home sold are you as convinced as I am that I should be the agent to sell your home simple little closing question you can ask and certainly one that you can insert throughout the course of your listing presentation to get some agreements and to draw out some objections number 24 is there any doubt in your mind about me selling your home is there any doubt in your mind about me selling your home again it's, it's very similar to 23 the last one we just gave you but it's just a little different terminology a different way to say the same thing see so many of our clients and I and I say this to you with respect 
think that they cannot succeed unless they take and edit the material I give them. I, I guess I'm the only person that writes scripts that has hundreds of thousands of editors. Most people that write a script have an editor that edits a script. I have hundreds of thousands. Everybody wants to change what I say. Well, Mike, you see, I'm not like you, okay? Are you male or female? I'm male. Well, then you're like me. Well, I'm taller, I'm shorter, I'm fatter, I'm thinner, I'm older, I'm smarter, I'm dumber. I mean, come on, get over it. The scripts are designed to get a response to help you move forward. And if you keep changing the scripts all the time, you're losing the impact of what we're trying to accomplish here in helping you get a contract sold. So back to 23. Are you as convinced as I am that I should be the agent to sell your home? Or 24. Is there any doubt in your mind about me selling your home? See, what you're allowing yourself to do with these two short scripts, draw out Get the objections out of the way. Get the questions brought up. Get them out in the open where you can address them and deal with them. Number 25, script. Do we both have the same objective? Not just putting your home on the market, but actually getting it sold. Now you're going to say, well, Mike, if, if they wouldn't have you there if they didn't have the objective of getting the home sold. Whoa, wait a minute. If you didn't pre-qualify them 100%, you don't know what their objective is. You don't know their motivation. You don't know what they're trying to accomplish. So when we say, do we both have the same objective? Not just putting your home on the market, but actually getting it sold. You're reconfirming the motivation. Remember, the M word, motivation, is the critical word in listing property. Anytime we deviate from the fact that motivation is the critical issue, we put ourselves in a position of jeopardy by not knowing, understanding exactly what that seller's thinking. Number 26, script. Why didn't you list your home with other agents you've interviewed so far? Now, here's my belief. Well, Mike, we like what you've said so far tonight. We want to talk to other agents. Or, we've talked to several agents. We're going to decide after talking to you. Well, see, my attitude is always the same. If they're saying that to you, you haven't been very strong in your presentation. If they're saying, we need to interview more agents, we have more appointments coming up, we're going to compare you now to who we've seen, you haven't done a very good job. So that's when you're going to say, why didn't you list your home with the other agents you've interviewed so far? Well, we, well, we, we didn't feel they could get it sold. Oh, do you feel I can get your home sold? You see, they only give you the objection about additional interviews when they're not confident that you can do the job the way it's supposed to be done. Script number 27. I may not tell you the things that are different from other agents. I'm just going to do them and do them more often. Okay, now listen. I may not tell you the things that are different from other agents. I'm just going to do them and do them more often. It's really kind of a great little statement to make, isn't it? Mr. and Mrs. Seller, everybody does pretty much the same thing. The trouble is, they don't do enough to get the home sold. I'm going to do the same thing everybody else does. I'm going to prospect every day to try to find a buyer. I'm going to make sure those buyers are qualified. I'm going to make sure that who's ever going to show you your property is bringing you the best potential buyer that we can bring to you. We're all doing the same thing. I'm just going to do it more often. I work a little harder than the competition. And then point 28, the last point for today, and, and it's really kind of fun because my assistant, Anna, and Michelle, our marketing director, said, you know, Mike, I think you brought this point up enough times. Don't you think you've covered it? But I'm going to bring it up one more time. Take more turn at bats. you got to increase the number of presentations you go on. Guys and gals, how do you expect to be good if you're doing it once a month? How do you expect to be good if you're doing it every 60 days? Now watch. At our one-on-one -on -one retreat a few weeks ago in San Diego, we had over 2,000 agents there for three days. Some of you, I'm sure, were in attendance. We had 11 different top agents up on the stage do live demonstrations of the various parts of the prospecting and listing process. And now here's what's interesting about that. All three great presenters, Mike Darda, Wendy Handy, and Tony Smith, who presented the listing presentation, all three of them stated repetitively the key to their success is they go on 10, 12, 15, 20 listing presentations a month. 
it's pretty hard to be bad when you're doing something all the time when you have a good script. But if you're only doing it once in a while, how, how can you ever get good at it? I mean, how can you ever become really efficient if you're not taking a lot of turns at bat? So, watch. We're excited about the month of February for you. January's gone. 11 months left. We can do a lot. We can list a lot. We can sell a lot. We're here to help you do it. See you next week.